Hey everybody, welcome back to our video fly tying series. I'm Steve Worley, owner of the Worley Bugger Fly Company, and today I'm going to show you how to tie Clark's Lady Stone Squala variant. So uh, this pattern is solely based off the Clark Stone Fly, which is a really traditional stone fly pattern that was that was uh, originally designed by Lee Clark. Uh, out of Oregon and uh, it's really the first pattern that I I have ever seen that uh, a tire integrated polypropylene yarn into the body of the fly as an underwing um, and of course you know now uh, the chubby Chernobyl lots of uh, parachute patterns all use polypropylene yarn we make strike indicators out of it um, you know, because of the, the floatability. So, uh, this is Lee's uh, Lady Stone Squala, and uh, of course, uh, it's the variant version because I have to add rubber legs to it. Lee loved the first uh, video that we shot, so uh, hopefully, he likes this one too. So, stay tuned for Clark's Lady Stone Squala variant. All right, so let's get started here. Tying the Clark's Lady Stone Squala. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is get a 3X long dry fly hook and load it in your vise. I'm using a brand new Arex FW538 and it's a size 10. You could, you could tie Squalas in size eight or 10. You could do it in a 12 too. Um, squalls are kind of a funny stone fly. You see them and they start out uh, here on the Yakima they start out uh, you know kind of olive-ish yellow and then as they as the hatch kind of progresses they they get more yellow. That's you know back in the day you know here when the fly fishing scene was kind of just getting going they thought the uh, they thought the squala was an actual golden stone, you know, that was hatching in in February and March. Um, and then we had it uh, correctly identified, you know, and then the whole squala scene kind of blew up. So it's a great first hatch of stone flies, really fun to fish. Um, and of course, you know, the fish just go crazy over that first big meal of the of the new season so so this is a new Arex hook there's not very many companies that build a 3x long dry fly hook the only company that was doing it before them was Mustad and that's a great 3x long uh, dry fly hook as well but uh, this one's uh, black nickel and super sharp so decided to tie them on these ones give it a try okay so load your 3x long dry fly hook in the vise, run down a thread base, back to the bend of the hook here. Then you're going to take your peacock diamond dub. And you want just a little bit of this. Great dubbing, John Romer's famous semi seal. This is the diamond dub. Dub's on. You can see really nice and easy. It's real buggy. So we're just gonna lay down a real light egg sack here in the back. Just a couple of, of wraps of it, I like to do. Just a real small little ball there. And then we're gonna take our rubber leg. To double it up. You can leave it kind of long, just you know, finish all the detail of the fly at the end. So just double it up and lay it right on the top there. Kind of pinch it between your fingers, and that'll get it kind of centered on top of the shank. And 
then you can bind that down. Run it back to the egg sack, and then what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to figure eight a little bit around both of the tails there. That's really going to help splay it, and then it's going to it's going to be coming right out the back of the egg sac. So now we're going to take just a little bit more dubbing here just to fill this in around the legs. So just run a couple of figure eights and that'll build your egg sac up. We want to make it look like it's like those legs are coming right out of that egg sac there. Okay, so after you got that completed, you'll take your flat diamond braid. Squallows are kind of funny how they start out. They're really kind of here on the Yakima, they're kind of olive-ish when they very first start hatching. And then as the uh, hatch kind of progresses over the weeks, they tend to get brighter in color and really, really get yellow. You can really, you know, you can vary the color for region wherever you're going to be fishing squalls at. They, you know, they happen in rivers all across the Pacific Northwest. So here I like the, this yellow. So once we got that laid in, tightened down, then you're just going to start wrapping forward. Moving towards the eye. You want to go up about three quarters of the way. And depending on your on your body size, you can make them thick bodied or you can make them thin bodied, whichever you want. Probably good to have both just for different water types, you know. Some some years we're fishing squalas in low water, some years we're fishing them in high water just because of, you know, spring runoff and, and uh, you know, snowpack melting. So if you want, you can run it back, you know, and double up on the body and make the body thicker. But for today's lesson, we'll just stop there and tie her off. So I'll make sure that's secured really well, tie it in. Pitch in there real quick. Okay, so your next material is what makes the uh, Clark stone fly the floatability that it is is the use of polypropylene yarn. So it's kind of nice to have it on this card. A lot of people like to use it, at, you know, a widow's web, which is the same thing as polypropylene it's just polypropylene yarn but it comes you know in a big shank I, I kind of like this because you can measure you can measure out how how thick you want your wing to be just by these little notches from the card so I just take one notch and just trap that in there like that and we'll set it right on top. This is going to be our first underwing. We'll tie that in. And then poly, you know, it's yarn, so you want to make sure that you comb it out. Then 
careful you don't trim your go right to the back this is an under wing so go right to the to the bend of the hook and snip it off and then repeat the same step with your cream so that'll give it a little bit this is a low riding stonefly pattern so this one I'm gonna lay right up on top and tie it in it'll, it'll create a little less bulk so get those ends tie them cut them off make them even they'll tie in a little bit better for you bind that down and then same thing just measure it right to the to your first wing there this will give it a little bit of a, a, a visibility you know the further that it gets away from you you'll see it on the water since it's a lower riding pattern there and then I'll just half hitch that and then usually what I like to do is just Go right to the base of that polypropylene and then just run a couple of thread wraps behind it. That'll kind of push the wing up a little bit. That underwing. Okay, so you're next. We're going to add an elk wing to the top here. So you're going to cut off a chunk of elk hair and take your brush and comb out all the under fur and kind of move it around in your fingers there that'll help clean it out get all that out of there make a much more buoyant fly better looking fly and then you're going to want to stack it just so you have a Good proportionate wing. You don't need a ton of this just because of the polypropylene. You got two layers of, of polypropylene, so you don't need a real thick elk wing on here. The elk's great, you know, of course it's a bigger animal. King of the forest. Um you know, much bigger, hollower hair than what deer is, so it's it's gonna float. It's gonna make your fly float really well too, and it's gonna give it that kind of aesthetic, you know, stone fly looking silhouette on the water. So you can kind of see the flat version of the of the hair, and then just measure it out. You want that? You want the tips? going back a little bit further than the bend of the of the hook so just lay that right on top and then take your thread and start binding it in and then kind of the tr the trick for tying in good solid wings is just taking your thread and running it right through that hair. That'll really trap it against the body of the shank of the of the iron there. Push those forward. You'll see it, it just tighten up. So working with deer hair, elk hair, moose, whatever gets a little messy so you just slide your little garbage pail there little trimmings and start trimming this all these 
front points out here. Get it as close to the to the body as you can. So it's nice to have a rotary vise or you know a vise that turns, you know, so you can really get in there and work. See what you're doing. Pull that wing down and see I'm really brushing on the back of that. It's not going anywhere. It's solid. So once you got it trimmed about as good as you can, then you want to just work your thread forward through the tips there and or the base, you know, and just bind the rest of that down really well. I like to try and keep the front of this fly, you know, even as much as you can. You can we're going to work with some dubbing, so that will that will help us too. But you can see as it all kind of comes together. And then once you got it all bound in right there, go right to the back of the base of the elk wing and lay in a half hitch. That'll make it solid. So our Clark's Lady Stone Squala is coming together. Usually what I like to do is just kind of move it around here like this and see how the wing looks. Sometimes we get a little bit too heavy on it. If you do, you can, if some of that hair is a little bit over to the side like it was there you can trim that out this side looks pretty good there's a couple there we could we got plenty of elk hair in there along with that polypropylene yarn this thing's going to float like a cork okay so next we're going to add our rubber legs which makes it the variant again so I'm doubling up these rubber legs i love like the smaller legs you know better on my patterns and you know depending like you know size eights and tens they just they look better and they move better in the water when you're when you're actually fishing the fly so just take and double up up the legs and you've seen me do this in, in all my videos where I add rubber legs so we'll just lay that right over the top like that Get it about as even as you can. The front legs aren't going to be as long as the back legs. And then we can just snip that loop. And then the weight of the bobbin will keep your legs in place there. And then you can just pull them down over along the side get them in place where you want them before we tighten them down. Another good reason why you have a vise that you know you can turn and look at your fly. So once you have those in place then you can just bind them down nice and tight. And again you can kind of see how they fold together you can take and figure eight around them that'll help splay them out but then again you know the dubbing you know will really help us when we start adding that and you can leave them long we'll, we'll do all the uh, fine tuning you know at the end here we're going to work the thread back to the base of our elk hair. Make some good tight wraps there. And we're ready for our 
tackle. Okay, so our next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a uh, medium done tackle, and you're gonna strip the fibers off, exposing the stem here. And you're gonna lay it in. And you're gonna bind that down. And then work to the back of the base there of your elk wing. Make sure that's nice and secured. You can pull on it. Make sure that it's not going anywhere. And next we're gonna fill in our thorax right here with some dubbing. And again, I'm using a wool dubbing, great dry fly. Floatability, gonna be a really good floating fly. So, you're going to take just small amounts of dubbing here and we're going to start adding it. You're probably going to need about a three inch long rope of dubbing depending on the size of the fly. Again, this is a size 10, so and the thorax doesn't have to be real thick. <clears throat> so you can see how nice that dubs on, it gets nice and tight. So we'll just kind of get ready here and we'll pull the, pull the wings and the, and the rubber legs back. And then we'll just start wrapping forward and try to pull tight and then you can pull those legs up pull them out of the way that'll really help splay them get them out really creating that nice silhouette stone fly effect for those big trout that like eating squalas <laughs> You got your thorax filled in there. We're ready to wrap our hackle forward. So you can get a hackle plier there. Make sure everything's out of the way. And we're gonna counter wrap this one. And depending on the size of your thorax, you can do three or four wraps, depending on how much room you have there. So we'll run that up like that, and then we will trap that feather. And it's good to trap it on both sides, so that really secures it. Take a look at it if you like what you see. Get in there nice and close. Don't cut your thread. Just snip off that excess feather there. And then just kind of comb everything back and get it out of the way. And then you can just kind of build a little thread head there. And then 
secure your thread. right in there and be careful don't trim those rubber legs might even have trapped a few of these fibers which is no big deal just cut those out of there because for the final stages here now we're gonna take and flip this over in the vise and then you're just gonna cut the bottom of them out. That's going to bring our fly down and get it right down in the film there. So now with your rubber legs you can just kind of just start slowly trimming on them. Getting them to length, the length that you like. You don't want them too long, but you don't want them short either. So just a little bit at a time until you get that kind of, you'll know when you see it, the aesthetically pleasing look. Just a little more on that side and then our back we'll trim. Those back legs are a little long. It's looking pretty good to me for the Clark's Lady Stone Squala variant. So there she is, folks. Tie a few of these up. We got Squala season coming. It's just a few weeks away. Old man winter will be leaving and spring will be rolling in. So start building up your arsenal. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, subscribe to the Worley Bogger YouTube channel. Pass it around. Appreciate it.